But I want to talk to ladies and gals in the service this morning that, that have your life before you, that God is doing a work in you and through you, and, and this has nothing to do with age. It has all to do with God's will, God's plan for your life. How many believe that God has a plan for us to our dying breath, that we can be productive right until the end? Amen. Declaring the goodness of God and the testimony of the Lord. So I want to focus on those gals that live their life outside the box. And so for the last couple of months, we have been challenged by the Holy Spirit and by the Word, you know, to step outside the boat a bit and realizing that God's blessing is not in the box, nor the miracle of God is not in the boat. And we have come to understand that our box, and we all have them, is any unspecified barrier, any unspoken boundary that we have, any predetermined default that either we have established for ourselves or that others have determined for us. So we have dealt with some of these things. We've dealt with boxes of fear and boxes of failure. We've dealt with boxes of apathy and lethargy and just anything that would hem us in, that would keep us from reaching our full potential in Christ. God wants us to have, have the courage to step beyond what's comfortable for us and, 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 and believe that, that God has much more in store for each and every one of us in our lives. And there is always another level. There's always another dimension. There is always another fresh revelation that God wants to bring into our lives individually and corporately as a body. Always, always more. How many believe that? There's always more. I mean, you know, you go to a restaurant, you go to your favorite drive through and, you know, you see the same menu every time you go, and you finally just think, you know... Tried that, 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 and you just say, well, I'll just try this again. But with God, he has an inexhaustible menu for us. His compassions, the Bible tells us, they are new and fresh every morning. God has so many layers of himself as we pursue him with a heart of passion that, that he allows us from glory to glory to realize and recognize and embrace and understand. So there's no end in sight concerning his character and his love and his wisdom. There's always more of him. There's always one more embrace in such a way that we've never sensed nor experienced in him. So all of our boxes that we have, if we're not careful, they just, they just rob us of, of really moving forward and, and really being all that God has called us to be. And I want to tell you something, that some of the most discontented, unhappy people in the kingdom are those that are just willing to set on their hands and live within their boxes. But the happiest, healthiest believers that I know are those that are always pushing the envelope. And, and you almost feel a little bit, when you walked away, you've been radicalized by them and their faith and their courage and their passion for God. I want to be that kind of person that pushes people in the direction of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. One of our theme scriptures, if you have your Bibles this morning, turn to the New Testament, Colossians chapter 2 and, and verse 8, the single verse, Colossians 2 and verse 8, reading out of the, the ESV, Paul said, see to it that no one takes you captive, even yourself, by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. In other words, let no one, nothing, take you captive except Christ. How many here you're held captive by Christ and Christ alone? That's our goal. That we are his slave. They are, that we are under his control. Amen. 
that he is calling the shots, ordering our days, determining our steps. I believe that as you look at Scripture, Paul was saying to us, let no one imprison you in false assumption. Let no one bottle you up in container-sized faith and vision. Let no one box you into man-made boundaries and barriers. Refuse to allow anyone to determine your God-given destiny. Amen. Let no one determine who you are and what you can be in Christ. Amen. But live your life untethered, unleashed, and unrestrained in your pursuit of the kingdom of God. And we made this statement through these weeks, live your life without walls and live your life without limits, going for God, all of God, now and forever. In other words, just, I'm all in. Amen. I'm, how many here, you're all in? I mean, you have made the decision. You have driven the stake at the altar, and there's no looking back. You are all in. You are serving God with all that you know in your own heart. Now, let me see your hand. I'm doing my best to be all in. Come on now, because I'm telling you, straddling the fence is uncomfortable. All in. Amen. So God's looking for those. We're all in. There's no question. He doesn't have to worry every day when we wake up which side of the fence that we're on. But we have predetermined that we are all and we have given God our all. He has the keys to the car, the home, and everything that we own and everything that we are. Amen. And we belong to him. I just believe God wants us to dare to take a risk occasionally and take a chance dare to step outside the boat. Who knows, it may, be, it may be your day that you walk on water. Amen? So, being Mother's Day, and I'm not, you know, you've been around me long enough, I'm, I'm not a, a big holiday preacher, okay? I'm just kind of, I, I, I get in the flow of it, and if, if Mother's Day, Father's Day f flows with what God's saying to me, then so be it. So, it is, and all the mothers said, Okay, praise God. Amen. So on this Mother's Day, I believe God is looking for some gals that will declare battle on their box and simply cry out, where he leads me, I am going to follow. Got any takers? Thank you. Hallelujah. So take your Bibles, and let's look at a couple of scriptures. In Luke chapter 2, this is very interesting to me, and I never had really thought of this, just praying about the service, and God just began to kind of open some things to me, and you probably got this a long time ago in Sunday school, but, you know, I'm slow, but I'm sure, okay, I'm steady, okay, I'm steady, and so I'm just now arriving at the truth you probably embrace, but it's interesting to me who the first person in the New Testament was to step outside their box and, and to declare war on their box. And guess what? It was a woman. Now we talked about Peter stepping out of the boat, walking on water, you know, his shadow cast, people getting in his shadow and being healed, and all the great men in the Bible go through all the patriarchs, you know, in Hebrews 11. But guess who it was in the New Testament that was the very first one, I believe, that stepped out of the box and said, hey, we look in Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. This sounds like a Christmas message, but in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. Now how many right then, you as a gal, would have picked up the phone and called 911? We used to read through this, you know, like, okay, this happens every day. Okay, it doesn't. I mean, I would have been freaked out. But she was 
greatly troubled, at least she was human, at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might have been. So her little mind is working. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How is this going to work? How will this be since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered her, How many God, God always has an answer? He does. And the... And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And what was Mary's response? And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. An angel shows up in her living room, tells this engaged young lady that she's going to bear the Son of God. The Holy Spirit's going to overshadow her and that which is conceived in her is divine. And what's her response? Okay. At your word, let it be unto me. That's amazing. The message says, in Gabriel speaking to her, nothing you see is impossible to God. And Mary's response, yes, I see it now. I am the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me just as you say. This was a monumental step of faith. Matter of fact, it was a giant leap of faith. Because here she is, she's engaged. Now listen, she's engaged. She's now expecting and no way to explain God in her life. And if you know the history, you know the consequences of an individual that's expecting in the engagement period with someone else's baby besides Joseph, the possibility of her being stoned to death. And yet she simply said to the angel, to God, to his will, to his plan, at your word. I surrender all claims, all rights, all privileges to my life, now and forever, and especially for the next nine months. It was such a God moment, just as much a God moment as when Jesus knelt in the Garden of Gethsemane facing the cross, and he cried, nevertheless, not my will, but yours. Let it be with me just as you say. See, here's the difference. We all have our dreams, but are our dreams God's destiny for us? The key is getting those dreams and destiny to align together. So what we want is what God wants, and what God wants is what we want. And we flow in the same vein of his will and his plan for our life because that is where peace and contentment and fulfillment is found. It's just when our dreams and our aspirations are in a different lane, a different county, than God's plan and purposes for our lives. So we've got to get to that place that we say to God, be it unto me at your word. I surrender all claim to my life, to my future, <laughs> to the plans that I have. I lay them all at the base of the cross and I say, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done in me and through me. Hallelujah. 
I surrender myself to the plan and purpose of God. And I don't know about you, but friends, I have to do that almost every day. Because the truth of the matter, most of us are a little rogue when it comes to serving God. Amen? How many here, how many here you call it the Irish in you, but you're a little bit stubborn at times? Huh? Amen? And, and you, you love God, but you want God to simply stamp his approval on your plan. You know, I have people that, none of you, but I do have people that, that set an appointment with me, and they come in, and they begin to tell me about what, they, what they're wanting to do, what they need to do. And all that they're wanting from me is not advice and not counsel. They're just wanting approval. They just want to have pastor's approval on their plan so they can go out, and if anyone questions them, they can say, hey, pastor said it's okay, so I'm good. And that's the way we do with God. We bring our plans and our proposals before God, and we say, okay, God, this is what I figured out for my life. This is going to work good for me. <laughs> now, would you just kind of stamp it with your approval so we can get on with this thing because, you know, you're busy, and I've been thinking through this, and I've already... You know, I've already got this figured out. How many knows that our, our ways, they just, they're so much lower than God's ways. And our thoughts are lower than his thoughts. And he has a kingdom plan and all that we see is temporal and now. And he sees forever. That's why sometimes his plan takes us through the valley and through the fire and through the pain and through the suffering. Because it's not just about now that he's looking at it's about tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and eternity and what it does in us and through us and for us because we are molded into his image not on the good days but on the bad days. So here is this young lady that just says, let it be with me just as you say. The truth is he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. Jim Elliot, a martyr, a missionary. It all begins and ends with take up your cross and follow me, Jesus. It all begins and ends with I have decided to follow Jesus. If you're going to follow him, follow him. If you're going to follow him, follow him wherever he leads. It all begins and ends with take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Nothing else is going to matter except him. My pursuit, my passion, my focus, my heart, my full intention is to serve him and please him. And the greatest joy of my life is to bring pleasure to his heart. And it all in, begins and ends with though none go with me, still, still I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow. Because hear me, the kingdom of God is not about us. It's about him. It's about him through us. Amen? Paul reminds all of us, you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. What was, what was that price? The very blood of Jesus. So glorify God in your body. We are a love slave to the master. I believe as we read in Luke, I believe this was an outside-of-the-box revelation to this young teenage Hebrew girl named Mary. I am not my own. I, be, I belong to him, so let it be with me just as you say. Father, at your word, at your word. And that, my friend, is living outside the box. Amen. Not at my calculation, not at my analysis, not at my figuring things out. It's at the word of God, the direction of God, the leadership of God. That's the way I live my life. I follow him. Everything I do is at your word, at your word, according to your will. And sometimes living in this mode is coming to grips with, I'm willing to be misunderstood, misinterpreted. I'm willing to sacrifice and suffer if need be. I'm willing to go the difference no matter. And I'm willing to follow wherever you would lead. 
So hear me today in this, on this Mother's Day Sunday. At your word isn't just about immaculate conception or a God child born of a virgin, but about living every day available and accessible to God and His will. Amen. So I'm not talking about, well, you know, you've got to be another Mary. No, that's, no, that probably will never happen again. Mother Teresa once said, I'm a little pencil in the hand of a writing God who is sending a love letter to the world. For nearly 50 years, she fed and served needy orphans, AIDS patients, lepers, tuberculosis victims, homeless families, and indigent people throughout her reach there in India. She dared to spend and be spent for the cause of Christ, and the whole world knew her name. Why? Is she a great theologian, great philosopher? She just had a great heart. She had a great heart for God and for people. She was willing to live every day available and accessible to God and His will. So truly, Mary, the mother of Jesus, became that little pencil in the hand of a writing God who is still sending love letters to the whole world. I want you to understand this morning, your world may not be in India or to be a Virgin Mary, but you can still be that little pencil in the hand of a writing God Yes, who is still sending love letters into the world. Your world may not be there. Your world may be here. Your world may be a loving nurse or a compassionate teacher or a concerned neighbor. Yesterday, finishing up, trying to finish up, Mother's Day honeydew list. Between me and Jesus and me and Motrin, I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> Our neighbor came in or came across the yard and was talking with Vic and I and there's tears just, you know, began to stream down because I asked, asked her, How, how's your day, how's your week going? She said, it's been a hard week and tears began to just flow down her face. Here's a couple, now this is, here's a couple that I believe she, she loves God, wants to serve God, visited a couple times here. But several years ago, based on a friendship and a relationship that they had, with a lady in Tulsa that her family pretty much walked away from her. Wanted nothing to do with her and she had a stroke. She was very incapacitated as far as physical abilities, going through severe lengthy rehab and so these neighbors, this man, this wife, Tanya, brought her down from Tulsa, moved her into their home remodeled their bedroom bedroom for her so they get a wheelchair in and out took her to rehab i mean just rearranged their whole life for this one individual and this last week they had to put her in an assisted living home because tanya's health was breaking because of just trying to take care of this friend she loved that was 20 years her age i thought to myself what does is, what is true Christianity look like? It's easy for us to sing a good song and preach a good message and high-five each other on Sunday morning because of the goodness and greatness of God, but what does true Christianity look like? And I think a lot of us fall short and being his hands extended and his heart beating because, because to do what our neighbors have been doing for the last couple of years is a huge inconvenience on us. And we fight selfishness as deeply as anyone. 
without God flowing through our hearts and giving us compassion and giving us sympathy, giving us love. I'm just saying, as we look at this whole issue of living outside the box, this could be, our neighbors could be a prime example of those that hey, said, hey, we're throwing caution to the wind and we're throwing our empty nest to the wind and we're embracing a need because it is before us and God has directed our steps and we will do whatever's necessary to be Christ to this person. So your world may be your world may be your world may be Amen. So I'm going to close this message with looking at Joseph. How many, how many girls here would like for me to pick on Joseph before we close? Because this is interesting. Here, here Mary is saying, at your word, Lord, I'm good. I'm all in. And then there's Joseph, and he's like, <laughs> whoa, turn to Matthew, we'll close with this scripture, turn to Matthew chapter 1, he's struggling with this life-altering, life-changing statement, at your word, being that little pencil, you know, following God off a, an apparent cliff, we guys are too logical for that, you know. We are the left brain. We, we need to analyze this thing, get some logic in this mix, you know. How many knows that our analysis and our logic oftentimes is the worst enemy to faith that there is? Can I get a witness? <laughs> I mean, what's the logic in stepping out of a perfectly good boat? I'm surprised there wasn't one female on board that did that instead of Peter. Oh, it's Jesus! Yeah! <laughs> Don't even think. You could drown. You need to go buy your vacuum cleaner tomorrow. But look in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. Okay, you've seen the experience of Mary, but look in verse 18. Now, the birth of, Christ, of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be the child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, and all the guys said, yes, beat her in your chest. He resolved, he determined, this is a practical thing, to divorce her quietly. I'm just, I don't want to shame her, so I'm just going to divorce her quietly, and that'll fix the problem. But as he considered these things, behold, <laughs> I love when God shows up and messes your plan up. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David. I got a, got a feeling there was some authority behind that voice. Do not fear to take Mary as your wife. That angel's finger was probably pointing. <laughs> I don't think the angel came and said, Oh, Joseph, son of David, baby, do not fear going to be okay. I believe the angel showed up and it was a dream in scripture. I believe it was Joseph's nightmare. <laughs> Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is, of the, is from the Holy Spirit and she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus. Amen. For he will save his people from their sins. 
And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And so he's preaching this message to Joseph. And when Joseph woke up from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord asked him. No, commanded him. Big difference. Mary was like, at your word. Jovis is like, you do this, son. Amen? So God revealed the, fl the plan first to Mary, one that would be willing to simply say with little to no explanation, at your word, I'm all in. I'm living by faith. Then he shows up on Joseph's doorstep, and he gets quite a different response. Anybody understand Joseph's struggle? I do. Do what? Are you kidding? There's no way under God's heaven. What you're asking is humanly and physically impossible. I simply can't do this. You're in perfect position for a miracle from God. The question this morning, who's more Joseph than Mary? Let's be honest, okay? Who's more Joseph than Mary? Okay, there's two of us that's been honest. Okay, all you loving Marys, God bless you. There's three of us. Thank you, Zach, for that honesty. All you Marys. Well, we can't say liar, it's storytellers. You storytellers. Who needs a life jacket before you're willing to step out of the boat just in case? Who struggles with the supernatural aspect of following God? Well, the good news, the good news is this. That when Joseph woke up from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. And he took Mary as his wife. At the end of the day, both Mary and Joseph embraced living outside the box. It's a huge step for Joseph. Both by saying, both by saying, let it be to me according to your word. So are we willing to take a chance on his word, place all of our trust in his word, live our life dependent on his word? You answer the question as I read these last scriptures. Psalms 119.89, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Isaiah 48, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever forever. Matthew 24, 35, Jesus, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. 1 Peter 1, 25, the word of the Lord endures forever. Psalms 119, 105, the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Can we trust his word? We can trust his word when we can trust nothing else. So may we all be as Mary so many years ago when she said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. May we all live our lives outside the box, untethered, unleashed, unrestrained in our pursuit of the kingdom of God. For that is the people that God is looking and longing for in this generation. Amen. Would you stand with me today? Father, in the name of Christ the Lord, I thank you for the word. I thank you, Lord, for the plan. I thank you, God, for your purpose in our lives. And I ask you this morning to challenge us and continue to stir us, God, concerning living our lives outside the box, stepping out of the boat. Embracing that which seems impossible. Being willing to take a kingdom risk. I do believe, God, that you are stirring and you are dealing with hearts and lives. Even in this service, even as you have over the last couple of months. And I believe that you are preparing people for their divine destiny. God, I pray that you will patiently lead us 
down the path that leads to that fulfillment. God, may we as a, as a church body, may we as Bethesda be that church that, that are willing to live outside the box, that are willing to do whatever it takes to make a difference in the world in which we live. God, not allowing the elemental spirits of this world or human traditions to enslave us, encapsulate us into that which hinders and halts the progress, the productivity of God. God, I love you. We need you to lead us.